Alright, hi. My name is Scott Anderson. Today I'll be giving you guys an introduction to regular expressions. And I'll give you a little bit of background of why I chose to get, uh, do regular expressions in my presentation. is because I'd often encounter regular expressions before. They seemed like a good solution to problems. But every time I'd see a solution that used regular expressions, it literally looked like gibberish. I had no idea what I was looking at. And I was talking to some other people in our cohort, and I believe they had kind of a similar mentality. So, so on that note, I, I started with learning the basics. So, like, what? What's, what are regular expressions? Well, find out regular expressions are patterns. They're used to match character combinations and strings. And along with the, these patterns, you use uh, string methods, such as match, replace, search, and split. And additionally, I found out something interesting. In JavaScript, there are also objects, which gives us access to methods such as test and ex execute. So what are some common uses? Well, common uses are searching and validations. For searching, we can find words in a sentences. We can replace different characters. For validations, it's very useful if you want to you know, validate a phone number, email, or password. All right, this stuff seems all kind of pretty basic. None of that seems very helpful in terms of actually implementing one. So let's just do some live coding and see how it goes. All right, so let's take a look here. I have a string. I have a undeclared variable. I have a function that's going to take in a string and a regular expression, and it's going to return to us an array if a pattern we put into our red regular expression is matched. And then I'm calling it here with our random string and regular expression. So let's write this regular expression. All right, so to start creating a regex, you're going to use two slashes, and your pattern is going to go inside. So in this case, let's just see if we can find regex. Oops. Let's run this. Oh, cool. They found regex. But I don't want to just find regex. I also want to find the capital version. How would I do that? Oh, well, I can do that by adding a modifier. Modifiers will go after our slashes. In this case, I'm going to add an I modifier, which means case insensitive. All right, let's run this, see what happens. Oh, cool. Now I found the capital version. But wait a minute. I didn't want just the capital version. Right now, I'm only getting that. I also want any time I get regex. OK, so if I want multiple times, I can add another modifier. This one's going to be a global modifier. Awesome. Now I'm getting both capital regex and lowercase regex. Ah, seems simple enough, right? Oh, uh, but what if we do something like this? Wait, why am I still getting this? This isn't regex anymore. I wanted the word, as long as it was a word. So for instance, an example where this could go really wrong, if I wanted to see if in is in this string that we're passing, and it's not, it's telling me it is, because it's finding in an intro, and in and into. And in here, it's still finding regex, even though that's not the actual word. So to fix this, we can add what's called a word boundary. To implement word boundaries, we're going to do a backslash b at the beginning, and a backslash b at the end. Cool. Now we're only finding the capitalized regex. And despite the fact that there is a semicolon, a uh, regular colon after, um, it still recognizes this as regex, because the boundary is only looking for word characters. All right, cool. This seems like a simple enough example. Not too tough, but honestly, we're being able to have a bunch of extra slashes, and it's getting kind of confusing. Are there some resources that can make this a little bit easier? Oh, yeah, there are. Let's take a look at this. This site's called regexr. What it basically do is you get to put your regular expression in here, which I've already populated, and you can have you have tons of sample text. In addition, oh, I have our regex over here, and it's showing us what it's currently matching. So if I were to go back. Delete this. Cool. Cool. Now we're matching everything again. And using this, since it's easy to see what's being highlighted, I'm going to show you some other cool things that are useful. So I happen to know that I wanted regex. But what if I didn't, and I wanted any character in terms of any letter character? You can use brackets. And you can do A dash Z. And now I am matching the first character if I wanted to match it. Any of these, I can put the global back on. And if, I, and if I wanted to match capitals, I could do A to Z. And I can keep it in here. I could put this by itself. And I can do the same thing with numbers. Cool. Now I know I'm matching a number. But what if I don't know how many times I want to match this number? I can use another thing, like a plus sign. And now it will show me put this back on, when I'm matching this number more than once. So if I were to get rid of the, the global, again, 
we only get the first one. But by keeping the global, I'll get everything. And this is different. I am literally matching 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So if we went back to other, in the REPL and we were to const log, I would get that as the whole string, as opposed to potentially only getting 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, et cetera. So that's interesting. But there are other cool things you can do. Say I only want three numbers afterwards. I can use curly braces. And it'll only find things that have three numbers. Well, I probably should remove that. Cool. 0, 1, 2. Not too bad. You can also say, I want a minimum and a maximum. I want something that definitely has two, but maximum of three. It can be represented like this. That's pretty, pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple. Well, and another good way, if you want to look at the plus modifier, is we can do our r plus. Uh, I messed up. Let me get rid of the global again. Oh, cool. Now we're finding all the R's down here. That's a nice illustration. But sometimes I'm still having a little bit of trouble visualizing some of this. Kind of looks a little bit confusing. This is kind of OK. So if you have trouble vi visualizing regex, there's another awesome tool called regulex. Here, oh, we have our expression from before. We have a word boundary. Oh, look, it says word boundary. Oh, A to Z, one or more times. And another word boundary. This is another awesome tool. We can start looking at some different things that we want to do here. What do you want to do? You can do words again. There's different ways to write this. So if you want to do digits, there's also shorthand, such as just slash d. But you can clearly see that this is kind of getting confusing because while well, this means any digit, an uppercase will mean not a digit. That's how we can start looking at regex and see how they can get complicated very quickly. But using some of these tools, it kind of makes it very like visualized, makes it very easy to understand what's going on. All right. Let's go back to our slides here. We already covered this. So I don't want to take too long here. I want to keep this short and sweet. But if you really want a key to getting good at using regular expressions, there's only one thing you have to really do. That's <laughs> practice. All right, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you, guys.